Tom, welcome to the live show. How are you today? I'm excellent, Richie. How are you today? Good. And Tom, I wanted to really talk to you about a few things. Uh, like, for example, our relationship, we've been together now for quite some time. And uh, we've been partners for quite some time. So, you know, Tom, as you know, and I was telling you that years ago, I look at social media as a platform, a recruiting platform. Right. Right. We've, we've had that conversation. Right. So and that's what I do. Now, I wanted to talk to you. Just give me a minute. I got to answer something here. But what I wanted to talk to you is the product that we have. So we have a great product now, right? Which right. is anybody that wants to be a dealer, all the talent that's out there on social media, we have requirements, right? And we yes. can get somebody funded to a new car franchise only. We want to stick with new car franchise, not used cars, right? Correct. correct. That's correct. So tell me a little right. bit about that process. What are the qualifications of that? Well, uh, first qualification would basically be that you would have to have uh, some type of experience in the automobile business. I would think you'd probably need eight to 10 years of some kind of management experience where you've been a general manager, GSM, uh, for a, or maybe even a service director uh, who has been in the business for a period of time. Uh, so you'd have to have some experience in, in that. Uh, the other, other qualifications are probably going to be that you're probably going to need to have uh, basically some history, uh, maybe where you've turned something around. That uh, maybe when you were working, let's say you work with a group and there was a dealership that wasn't doing well and they sent you over to run that dealership and you turned it around. You made so you have some kind of story to talk about like that, uh, because the, one of the most important things, Richie, is going to have to be getting uh, man, getting a manufacturer to uh, to be able to let you become the dealer. So right. if you have a good, if you have a good background, a good, a good, uh, a good background and a good story, that'll help you a lot. Or if you're working with a dealership, let's say today, and it's, uh, let's say it's Honda, Nissan, Toyota, and you decide you want to buy another Toyota store or buy a Honda store or buy a Nissan, if you have that relationship with the manufacturer, <clears throat> that makes it much easier. Uh, I think a lot of dealers, a lot of manufacturers now are going to want you to have some kind of NADA certification. Uh, NADA has a school uh that basically gives you that kind of certification that you've gone to their NAD Academy. I would suggest if you haven't done that, that you look into that because it's going to be very important for you to be, uh, have that kind of uh, qualifications uh, and be able to do that. I know, again, I know a lot of manufacturers are asking if you have that and uh, you know, then it then comes the financial things. You're going to have to have a X amount of cash, to be able to uh, to buy the dealership or you get get ownership of the dealership uh if we if you're working with uh, i guess with our group you would probably have to have some kind of a percentage of capital to be able to put in to be able to run the operation and uh, we'd have to go through that on the size of the dealership i mean you know if you're buying a certain dealership for 10 or 12 million dollars you're probably going to need to have a decent amount of capital to be able to get into that and be able to finance that. Uh, the manufacturer is going to be very important in that also. They're going to want to make sure that you have enough capital not only to buy the dealership, but also be able to run the dealership. So they're going to be looking for what kind of cash you have in the operation to be able to run it. So we'll have to, we have to go through all those areas. Um, I work with a lot of CPAs. Uh, and so if you, if you decided you wanted to get involved, I'd be happy to talk with you about it. I'd be able to set you up with, uh, some of the CPAs I know and be able to put together a, some kind of, uh, you know, Tom, portfolio you to work that up. because, you know, throughout the years we've put deals together and one of the biggest things that we've had a problem with is the property. So the dealership worth 10, 10 million. So we get them funded, you get them funded, whatever, right? Now the biggest thing is the property. Now the property is XYC, so they're capped out. Well, guess what? Our solution is 
if you don't, if you can't afford the property, we have a group of basically syndicators, real estate syndicators that will take the property. Okay. And now you just pay the rent on it. Okay. Right. So you don't have that problem anymore. And I'm talking to you about real syndicators, right? You don't have right. any problem anymore. They're affiliated with the family office industry. Okay. So we're, we're in there. So that's what real estate is the biggest problem. When we find out like that Ford store, remember we had everything done right. and right. then bang the property. Well, we need another 2 million. Guess what? We're capped out already because we've right. done everything. And one of the biggest thing that I really like about this, if they have at least one property, Okay, and they don't have a large sum of of down. We can still get them done because that's their collateral, right? Right. So right. now, to all these guys that have so much talent, and you know, Tom, for the last maybe five or six years, I go on social media in and out, different than when I started posting and posting. I go to a lot of groups. They don't even know I'm there. I just join. I just watch. And that's what I use it for. I use it as a recruitment tool. And I see so much talent that's going to waste working for somebody. These guys are so good that they can probably develop a business of turning dealerships around. Right. Right. And actually exactly. investing and making money and they work for themselves. And there's no more. At the end of the day, what happens in a dealership is, you know what, if the owner wants you gone. That's it. There's no warnings or nothing, right? So right. we have the product for the real estate market. If there's a problem, because we know, Tom especially knows as a broker, we know where, where the objection is. You got them all set. You got them all done. Bang, the property comes up. So Tom and myself, we worked maybe three or four years finding this solution because we're still right. do business, but not as much as we want. And having that real estate covered is really, really key. Because when you cover that, now you are a hundred percent closing ratio. Because they're well, people, we get them approved through the OEM, real easy. We get everything together, and that's where the problem is. Well, that's right, Richie. You're going to look at when you're looking at what the if you're <laughs> buying the dealership, you're going to be paying Blue Sky. You're going to be buying the parts. You got to be buy, uh, buying the furniture, equipment, uh, tools for the operation, and then you got to have enough capital to be able to run the dealership. So usually, the blue sky and the property value are pretty close to each other. So unless you have a double the amount of money you think you need, uh, you're going to have a tough time doing it uh, with the property. Now, if you have somebody who's going to buy the property for you and then rent it back to you, or mortgage it back to you, depending on how you want to work this. Uh, then you could you could handle that. There's not a problem with that. I think that would be great. It would obviously it would put a lot of guys that are in a position. I should say guys and gals, but a lot of people in it put them in a position where they can buy go buy something without having as as much capital as necessary. And then after a period of time, that they can move forward and go from there. Plus, and the, the way beautiful, manufacturers, you know, I'm glad that you brought go. this up because the beautiful thing about this is so. You got a car guy that what he's good at is selling cars, right? He's good Correct. at process. He might not be necessarily good at marketing. Well, guess what? We also have a company like Clickable and LookSmart that has all the marketing abilities with a tremendous team, a team here and a team abroad. So now, right, we'll make sure that dealership turns around for that customer. Right, because it's our job to make sure that that goes. If they want to use our product, they don't have to use our product. Let me say this: you don't have to use our product. But car guys are really good when you're in front of a customer, talking to the customer, and taking it to a deal. Okay, and now they bring us in, and you know what? They reach out to us. We want to work with you guys. Bang! We use the technology of big data, Google AdWords, automation, and artificial intelligence. So we wrap everything up and you know what? You're going to perform anyway, 
right? And now you add that to the mix because these guys are going to perform anyway. These guys are so strong, the guys that I have out there, especially in the 30 car group, right, which is a Fran Taylor group. It's a very big group. And I, I got to tell you something, that those guys there, they sell 40, 50 cars. This guy's here to sell 60 cars a month, okay? Talent like you never seen. Talent like I've never seen, okay, in all the years in the business. And they're working for a dealership, and they have a little bit of real estate, right? They have a little bit of real estate because for the last three or four years, they've been investing in real estate, because there's a lot of content mm -hmm. out there of these right. guys talking about real estate, how big it is and all that. Okay, great. So they're investing in that. Now you can get that and buy a new car franchise. And, you know, right. that's what America is about. America is about the opportunity. It's called the land of opportunity, right? God bless right. America. That's what it's about. So there's plenty <laughs> of opportunity out there right now. For you guys and gals and the gals, I know gals that are doing 45, 60 cars. They, they're great owners. You know, I, the other day I read something, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, of the female in the automotive space are unbelievable because they're very detailed. They're very, you know, they, they have a lot of common sense because they, they're mothers, you know, so they have a different thought process. <laughs> you know, they're great for the business, you know. They're unbelievable. The stores that use them, they turn stuff around. Like, you got one of the biggest influences that I call, Lisa Copeland. She's really good at what she does. She's got so much talent. It's, like, amazing. And that's what I watch. I, I, I look for the talent based with our partners that we have, Tom, you and myself, with opportunity for everybody to make money. What are your thoughts right. on that? Yeah, no, I'm right with you, Richie. Uh, you know, I know ladies that are in the business that have maybe be on the accounting end of the business, office managers, controllers, CFOs. And, you know, after a while, they know the business as well as anybody. And if you put them in charge, I know a couple of ladies that went from the office then to run service departments and sales departments, and they do a great job. So, uh, uh, there's no reason why anybody can't get involved. But more importantly, back to what you were talking about earlier about the property and owning the value of the value of the dealership. It's really important that you have enough capital to be able to weather any storm. You, and if, if you can see right now what the storm is, but also with clickable, you're going to be in a position where, you know, you don't not only you can dominate your market. I mean, when you work with auto trader and you work with cars.com, they don't do the social media type of stuff that you and, and Clickable are doing. You're basically making relationships. You're bringing customers to them, to the to the dealerships that are basically pre-qualified, that you have a really good idea if those customers can really buy something. When you're going through autotradercars.com, it's just, uh, here's the customer, and you don't know if the customer can or can't, and uh, it takes a longer period. But you're bringing solid people to the, the, to the, to the dealership to the salesperson that he knows right away the customer is capable of buying it. And uh, now what you have to do is build a relationship, sell the vehicle, find what the customer's needs and wants are, and uh, it makes it simple. But when you know if somebody can do it, that makes things a lot easier than, uh, than basically just saying, well, here you go, here's a lead, go follow it up and go from there. You know, I got a few of automotive trainers that are corporate trainers in big organizations. They're talented like you never seen. They got a track record. They go to this group, turn it around in four years. They go to the other group, turn it around in the next three years. I mean, there's so many automotive corporate trainers, which corporate trainers is when a group has, I think, more than 16 stores. It doesn't, yeah, right. it doesn't pay. And these guys are trainers, but on hands in their dealership. OK, so they're like not really like what the trainers are out there now doing. You know, they're on hands that every day seeing changes. Right. And as a matter of fact, I talked the other morning with, with a corporate trainer of a major automotive group. <clears throat> and he was telling me that sometimes he goes out and gets different trainers to send them videos or he looks for videos to see what they're doing. Right. Sure. And now what right. they're doing right? He sees if it works or it doesn't. It might be a bad process, but then he puts a spin on it for him. 
right? right. And that's how this guy has turned around so many dealerships, right? So corporate trainers also, let me reach out to you guys because you guys are doing a great job in these big auto group, right? These new car franchises like Sonic o Automotive, you know, Sonic, Auto Nation, Penske, all these stores have tremendous corporate trainers. I mean, the, the Lithia Group has a tremendous corporate trainer division. I mean, they got real, they got the real stuff. And you want to know something? You guys can turn a store around. So you guys can buy that store that wants to get out, that the dealer has hit at a certain age and wants out. Because his kid might be an right. attorney or his kid might be a doctor. <laughs> right, the kid's right. not interested, right? So this is a great opportunity. If the numbers are a little down, these guys know how to wrap up because they've gotten involved in loser dealers and they've turned them around. What are your thoughts? Richie, Richie, there's no question that right now a lot of 60, 70-year-old automobile dealers are be looking to, to basically sell their operations and cash out. Uh, they're in the position where they've done this now for 40 or 50 years. Uh, this virus has caused them to be in a position where they've decided that maybe it's time for me to, to leave. There's going to be, I think, a lot of dealerships that are going to come on the market here as soon as, this, as we start reopening. A lot of guys are going to say, you know what, if you find a buyer, I'm willing to talk about it. I think blue sky values are going to be down a little bit because of that. I think a lot of guys who thought their cars, their dealerships were worth five, six, seven times earnings are going to find out, you know, maybe I can get two or three times earnings, cash out and move on. So I think there's going to be tremendous opportunities. And again, I think, you know, I, again, I, I like to work with CPAs that represent the dealer. Why do I like to look at those? those guys are the, the people that the dealer trusts, he goes to them and says, you know what, I think I want to sell. Well, then it's up to them to try to help the dealer get through the selling process. And usually that's why they come to people like myself. They say, Tom, can you help it, help me find the right buyer for the store? I go, yes, I can. And, and I'm able to do that. I have, you know, six or seven clients that I work with automatically on different dealerships. Uh, they're big groups. And I basically pr uh, present those those people with it. But I'm always looking for individuals that are looking for a certain franchise or a certain area, or maybe they're willing to move someplace else to start up their own business. But but you said earlier, you know, when you're a when you're a GM and if, if you don't have a percentage of the business, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> the dealer says, I'm selling, you're out of a job. And well, I'm glad you said that because you have a percentage yeah. of the business. You might have 10 or 15%. Doesn't mean that you can't get another dealership, right? Uh, at no at your uh, 50%. You can talk to the dealer principal right there and say, this is my deal. I got so much. I So now you, you're making something make sense. But Tom, I want to touch on something. Sure. So part of our service too, I mean, a lot of guys don't know this about you, Tom, because you're really not out there. You're like uh, for Richard, but you've been behind the scenes for a lot of time. We've been traveling back and forth to Arizona when I build stuff. You're part of my nonprofit also. Uh, you're a member right. there. We, when we did the nonprofit, we put you on there. But that's not the only thing we're talking about. Here's what we're talking about. People don't really know what you do. So the value of you doing a deal with us, apart from getting funded, apart from the real estate, there's something else. Tom is part of a club, a special club that's for CPAs, right? So right, he right. has all the, all the information on financial statement. Tom was a dealer, but forget about the dealer that he was. What really the value that he does, he's in a 20 group of CPAs. <laughs> right. So that's, now, that's now when we t when you want a store, we do a full assessment and find out if that's right, not just by us, by Tom Hearn's contacts. Because what Tom Hearn trains on is looking at your financial statement in a dealership. That's what his whole process is. That's what. So now today, he's part of a elite group. For CPA, so elaborate on that a little bit, Tom. Well, yeah, I, I get involved with I, I the, the my group is called the Dealer CPA Network. 
There's uh, 15 uh, firms in the, across the United States that are in the automobile business. We meet on a, usually it's a monthly basis on conference calls to talk about tax issues, talk about uh, like this PPP program. We were, I mean, everybody was on this uh, back when it was coming out in March. We made sure everybody understood what, what, what was going to happen what the rules were as the rules changed for some of you dealers who don't know that the rules have changed. And I'm sure some of the GMs may not understand it either, but the rules have changed in this program four or five times, but we were right on top of it. We had all the guys were working together uh, right on top of it, but I do a lot of uh, what I do for one of the firms is I basically, they send me financial statements. I'll go over them and give them an outline of what I think the dealer's doing uh, with benchmarking, I've got a full benchmark uh, scenarios. I've got contacts with NADA. I have contacts with Nichols Campbell Morrill. So I have a pretty good idea of what, uh, what the benchmarks are for an automobile dealership. And I can help you look at the financial statements and we can decide whether the dealer is asking the proper pricing, uh, what the proper pricing would be for the dealership. So that you're, we're, but the, the key is here, you just don't, I don't want, I don't want my clients to make a mistake. I want my clients to make sure that they're happy with what they're buying, that it's the uh, right amount, and that when they purchase it, it's something they're able to make a profit on and make a living off of uh, instead of being uh, under the gun right from the start. I want to make sure that's all set up that way. So that, yeah, that's what I do. I, I'm able to do reviews of all the financial statements and help you be able to do this. Also, you know, I, 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 the property is not uh, my expertise, but... Uh, Again, I and Richie, we talked about that uh, with this new with this new real estate type thing. I think we'll have a better idea of exactly what the appraisal should come out to be, and be able to talk about those things. And uh, you know, Tom, the perfect thing is what our opportunity is with these car guys, car ladies, all these people out there in the car business have tremendous talent. So why not do that? Even GMs that are part of something, why not do that? But um, one of the biggest opportunities, these trainers, they're working like it's going crazy, you know, and they make good money. I mean, you got guys out there that are making 300 grand a year just doing training. Right. Right. So right. they're professional. So that guy or that lady is going to get approved from the OEM in a heartbeat because they have the track record. That's and correct. Turning their place around. So imagine you putting somebody in like that as a dealer. So the funding process, it'll be easy because our partners with this funding thing, they're going to right away step up because right. it's going right. to be successful. You know what I mean? So that's what we look. We look more not only for how much you have, but what your talents are. Right. That's and correct. That's going to break correct. the deal or break the deal. So right. that's not what the issue is. What the issue is the talent in the car business today. There's a lot of talented guys, especially with they know how to sell social media. They're a little bit of marketers. They're a lot like marketers. You know, they know, you know, so that's what it is. Capture that talent because that talent is going to be the new generation of owners. That's what's right. going to happen. With oh, that's that's account. exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, uh, there's going to be a there's going to be a shift now. There's going to be old, older guys are getting you know, older guys and gals are getting out, and younger people are going to hop in. I mean, that's the way. That's what, and that's what makes this business very interesting. It's because things are going to change in this business. The things are going to be different the next five or ten years, and uh, but that's that's the challenge and. Uh, Again, we're back to the marketing again. You're going to have to figure out marketing is going to change. It's not going to stay the same. I, I guarantee you that ten year, at five years ago, you know, Auto Trader and Cars.com were it. <clears throat> that was the best way to meet on the internet or get internet leads. And that's evolving to the point now where you've got even even more sophistication, like, like you said earlier about your social media. So there's all sorts of changes going on in this business. And uh, the the people that are on the front line are the ones that know what changes are going to be and they uh, be able to stay on top. And especially if you're a corporate trainer, I mean, obviously you're able to look at all sorts of different ways of doing things and you're seeing which ones fit the best. 
and you can use and when you if you own your own store, you certainly could implement those type of processes into your store and, and become very, say, very, very successful. Let me just say this time. I agree with that. And let me just say this. Just in case when that rep comes into the showroom, okay, the other thing I'm going to say, that rep comes into the showroom and he sees a high performance guy, he's on his social media immediately, okay? Right. Just right. let me say that. So be careful also what you post on social media. If it's a negative thing or you're having a bad day, try to stay away. You know why? Because that OEM is looking at it. If you're, no, I'm serious. I fit in well, that, that's true. That's true. I'm not going to say it, but your OEMs today, these reps today are watching everything. Right. They really are because these are the future dealers. You know, these are our future GMs. These are future GSMs. What they're right. doing today out there on social media. I mean, it's not just me watching it. Don't think like, you know, I came up with that. <laughs> and the OEM situation came up with that, okay? Everybody's watching. OK, so that's very, very important how you post, when you post, if you have a structure, if you have a thing, how you do things. That's what they're looking for. These guys go on live anytime they want. And you pop up. That's great. But just, you know, this is like really the automotive industry. Pay attention. There's other people paying attention to you. You guys got a lot of talent. out there. God bless you all, because what I've seen in the last couple of years ever since live started you know what i've seen is tremendous so when you go on live just know as a fact that big brother's watching you no i think that's really important to, to yeah the manufacturer is able to pick i mean you know not to get too political but even in the political world you got to be careful what you put on social media because next thing you know it's going to come back and bite you so it's right, very, important, very important, important. Your industry, whatever industry you're in is paying right. attention. There's That's guys true. that are looking into it and recruiting the talent. Right. You're in, you're selling yourself on live and you're getting opportunity. Trust me, if you do it right, you're getting a ton of opportunity. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think I Richie, I'm right with you. I mean, I, I did some you know uh, I was when I was working at the university level, I taught for, at the university level in Northwood for about 10 years. And during that period of time, I ended up doing some recruiting and placing people. Well, in today's marketplace, what just because I knew a lot of CPAs and I knew a lot of uh, office managers and controllers across the United States, I was able to help place some of them. But in today's market, uh, you would use uh, social media is where you find all these people. As you said earlier, you join these groups, you get involved with these groups and just listen and watch. And, you know, eventually you, you find people that are you see people that are talented, know what they're talking about and you use those people. So it's a it's a very interesting it, it, it's a whole different, as you said, it's a brave new world out there and trying to find talent and trying to locate talent. And you really need to be on top of that you really need to be part of that and, and be able to find the right people that fit and you can do that with social media because sometimes you can see what they're what how they fit how they would fit into your organization which is something you couldn't do 10 15 years ago correct that's something you couldn't do that's right and you know tom i wanted to share something with you too the the talent that's out there right and it's not raw either by the way you know Back in the 80s, you know, and back in the 90s, you had talent that was raw, you know, Jackie Cooper days, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, yeah. You know, raw. Today, the talent there, because if they don't get trained, they're going to workshops on their own money. I saw that with Fran Taylor. Let me tell you, today you really got, today you got guys talent and trained. That's deadly. Those are the guys that I want to reach out to. You know, you don't have to work for a dealership so much and all this we have a solution for you give tom hearn a call let him do an assessment and then we take it from there yeah i'd love to just if anybody's interested please can contact me the numbers there uh i'm in the eastern time zone so just remember uh, i'm a, but I, I call me anytime i'd love to talk with you uh we can discuss the what you're looking for discuss what you have be able to try to put together the right package for you and be able to find the right operations for you. And uh, I, I'd love to be able to help you. I mean, I, I have clients right now that are thinking of selling and uh, 
So I, I do have some inventory of dealerships that are, are available and I'd love to talk to anybody and go from there. And, you know, as I said, it, it, it we have to make sure everything is done properly. I mean, we have to make sure, I mean, make sure the performer that we're going to put together for the factory is correct. We're able to do all those things for those those people. And I've got uh, a couple of other people that work with me. Uh, one of my partners is an ex-GMAC employee. Uh, so Joe has a great, uh, a great knowledge about setting up the, the proper information and getting everything done. I have other gentlemen I work with that, uh, again, are uh, professionals at this and understand exactly what's necessary to be able to get the deal. Not only one, two things. One to get the deal done and then to get the deal purchased and get the deal approved. And that's the key area. We got to make sure the manufacturer approves the dealer and we're moving forward. So we're able to do all Great. those things. So, so you know, Tom, I want to thank you for coming on and we'll talk like we always talk. But anyway, it's been great to have you. It's good to see you. How well, healthy you. you are with this coronavirus. It's great <laughs> that you took care of yourself, you know? So yeah. uh, say hello to the family and say hello to I will do that. hugs for me. Yep. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, Richie. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.